Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chimmy. I make videos every week. All of my videos are very different from the other. I make videos to add value to you and to myself in the process. I also do a lot of social experiments with myself, which is what I've done this week. If you looked at the title and you look at my attire, this week's video is about wearing traditional clothes for five days in a row. To give you a little bit of background, I'm a Malaysian. I was born and brought up in Malaysia, but my roots are from India. My ancestors are from India. I am probably the third or the fourth generation Malaysian from my father's side but the first generation Malaysian from my mother's side. My mom was born and brought up in India, got married and moved to Malaysia. I go back to India every single year, or rather I used to when I was in primary school and secondary school. I went back to India every single year for school holidays to visit my family. Because I have such a close-knit family and because I used to go back to India so often before, I'm very familiar with the traditions and the cultures that we practice there in India, like clothes and food and beliefs and faith and everything. Every time I go back to India, all I wear is Punjabi suits, very similar to the one that I'm wearing now, but probably something more simple or maybe grand depending on the occasion. But any Indian occasion like weddings or birthdays or functions or parties and that sort of stuff, it's always traditional clothes that we wear like Punjabi suit and linga and saris. I've hardly ever worn Indian traditional clothes here in the UK. The only time I would ever wear it is if there were to be some sort of a wedding or an occasion here. And that too, only Asian wedding or occasions. I would never wear it to a local friend's wedding. And on top of that, I don't have any of my Indian traditional clothes here in Bristol. All of my traditional clothes are for occasions. They're all really grand. So much beadwork and embroidery and it's just heavy and it's just over the top for a regular daily use. So I've left all of those in Glasgow in my mother's house because I don't use it here and I haven't got enough storage in Bristol. I only use it whenever I go to Glasgow anyway. So I just leave that there, use it when I go back for weekends or for some sort of an occasion and then leave it there. For some reason last week it occurred to me, why don't I ever wear any of my Indian traditional clothes here in UK, especially in Bristol? I would never wear that for a local friend's wedding. I would just wear a dress or something else, but never an Indian wear amongst local people. Maybe I was feeling a bit embarrassed, maybe I was uncomfortable, it's a few things put together. So I decided last week, let's try wearing Indian clothes again. The last time I ever wore something traditional was for Christmas last year, it was a sari, and that too was after a year or so. So with the limited um, traditional attire that I had in Bristol, I dug out everything and I planned on what to wear. It so coincidentally worked out in such a way that I had five traditional clothes here. I don't know how I ended up with those here, but somehow I did. Indian traditional wear is somewhat a bit tedious sometimes because of the material, you need to iron it, you need to starch it. In India, all of our party wears, and you know some of the patasaris and those kind of things, we give it to people outside to iron it. They've got special equipment that they would normally use to do that. And people come to the house, take our saris away from us, iron it, starch it, fold it neatly and nicely for us. It's as good as brand new when you look at it in the shop itself. That's how they give it back to us regardless of how many times we've already used it. Here in UK, you have to do it yourself. And I dislike ironing. It's not one of my favorite things at all. Usually I push all of my ironing to Lakshman, but this week I did it myself. It took me such a long time to iron everything. One after another, I had to iron it. But I tried to find shortcuts here and there obviously and I thought okay the pants is not going to show here or the skirt is not going to show, the back is still going to crumple up when I sit down so I don't have to iron the back. I gave all sorts of excuses not to iron it properly and the biggest thing was I'm working from home, no one is going to see it so it doesn't matter whether I iron it or not, this is good enough and I just put everything away. While I was prepping my clothes for the week, I had to prep my mind mentally, I was like Am I really going to do this? Do I really want to do this? I was trying to talk myself out of it several times. I reasoned with myself and I said, nah, it's not necessary. I know what traditional clothes is. I've worn it. I have occasions to wear it and I really don't need to wear it now. So why bother? But I wanted to kind of maybe feel how other people feel when they're in the UK. I've seen people do that here, you know, when they are used to their own traditional clothes. They are not comfortable with jeans and t-shirts or skirts and dresses and stuff. They only wear Punjabi suits or they even wear sari on a daily basis. Winter, spring, summer, any time, that's all they wear. So I wanted to try and see how that felt. Monday morning came and I picked up the first Punjabi suit. 
The one that I wore on Monday is actually my mother's. She gave this to me probably two years ago. I don't even remember if she gave it to me. I took it from her. It just didn't fit her anymore and I took it from her. I needed something when I went on a trip to India and I didn't have enough Pandora suits to wear so I took hers. It is a black one and it's kind of loose and airy which is comfortable for India because it's super hot in India. Whenever I go to India, I don't really care about how I carry myself or how the fitting looks like or what I'm wearing. As long as it's a Punjabi suit, I'm like, yeah, okay, that will do. That's fine. That's enough for me. I usually do a lunchtime walk in the afternoon. On Monday specifically, I didn't do any lunchtime walks because it was cold and it was rainy. I was rather relieved actually, so that I didn't have to go out with a Punjabi suit. By the time I finished work, I couldn't wait to get out of it. But when Lakshman came back from work, he thought I looked nice. He actually said that he normally doesn't really notice things like that. But he said that I look nice and I should wear Punjabi suits more often. I was a bit surprised. Tuesday morning rolled in. I was even more reluctant to wear the Punjabi suit that I selected for Tuesday. This again is my mother's, but it's super huge. When I tried it on, I think it was early last year that I tried it on, it didn't fit my mum. It was slightly loose for me, but I thought, yeah, it'll still work, it doesn't matter. I was my biggest last year, I think, when I took that from her. I kept it in my wardrobe, didn't use it. I wore it on and I thought, should I pin this up? Should I do this? Should I do that? But I ended up pinning it up because it was super huge and bulky and it just didn't look nice. It looked really awkward and stuff. I didn't kind of like the orange on the shoulders, you know, but it is what it is. I kind of consoled myself saying that I'm working from home, no one is going to look at me, nothing. All of a sudden at 10 o'clock, my manager sent an email around to my team and he said, um, in our team meeting at 11 that morning, everyone needs to have their videos on, their webcam on. I was shocked. I thought, what am I going to do? Should I just go and change out of this? I don't want people to see me in this, you know, in what I'm wearing. Um, they've never seen me in a Punjabi Super 5, never worn any of these things to work before in the office. They're not used to such cultures and traditions, you know, it's a bit different for them. As it is for me, while I'm in front of them. I was a bit embarrassed when I first switched on my camera, but I sat in such a way that you can only see like, the shoulder part, and that's where they saw that ugly orange thing. But no one actually said anything. I don't know if people noticed it and didn't voice it out, or people just didn't notice anything. It just looked as if I was wearing a t-shirt or something like that. No one said anything and I thought, okay, that's fine. That's that. Um, that day was over. Didn't go out for a walk in the afternoon because I had someone come into the house during my lunchtime. So didn't have time to do that. We went for a walk in the evening though, but I changed into um, my gym attire because I was going to do like two long walks and it wasn't going to be easy to do that in a Punjabi suit at all. And I said, this is long enough. Day two was over. On Wednesday morning, I finally had something of my own to wear. I didn't take this off my mother. It's something that I chose and I bought for myself. And I don't even know why I did that. I don't like green. Let's just put that out there. But this is like a proper bright green. Um, actually, I do know why I bought it. It's because of that tupata. The year that I bought that, that was in fashion. Plain Punjabi suit with a full print or a floral print tupata that you either leave it loose or fold it up and put it by the side or put it on both sides as people would in India. But this was one of those most difficult things to iron and I didn't do a good job with it at all, especially the tupata. I kind of um, cheated, obviously. I only ironed the front part which shows visibly. The minute I put this on with the tupata and stuff, I felt like I needed to glam up a little bit. So I kind of made up my face a bit, put on a little bit of lipstick, put on earrings. Usually, I don't put on any accessories while I'm working from home. No earrings, no makeup, not even my ring, nothing at all. But today I made up a little bit because I felt like I needed to look presentable to match the attire that I was wearing. Within the first hour of work, I had to tie up the tupata by the side because it was annoying and troubling. It was super long and thick. And by 10 o'clock, the earrings went off. I couldn't tolerate it. The stem was too long and it was like dangly and heavy. So I was like, forget it. I'm not wearing this, I've had enough of this. By midday, I got rid of the tupata altogether. Today, I braved myself to go out for a walk in the afternoon though. I had to do a lot of prep talking in my mind to go out for a walk in that Punjabi suit with my sport shoes on. So off I went for my lunchtime walk in the afternoon. Lakshman was making fun of me. No, he wasn't actually. He didn't make fun of me. He just said I look different. 
But despite that, I walked around. I was very careful to observe how people were looking at me. I wanted to see how people's reaction were. So I noticed some people who were walking across the street from us or you know behind us or next to us. I saw some other people walking in the afternoon. They gave me a double take for sure, especially people in the car I noticed. I was noticing people for the first um, maybe 10-15 minutes of the walk, halfway through the walk, I was observant looking at how people were reacting. But then we got carried away talking about something else. So I just focused on my conversation with Lakshman and I forgot about people. Initially I thought they probably did the double take because I was wearing a Punjabi suit or it could have been because it was like a bright green Punjabi suit. Either way, there was definitely a difference. When I go on my regular lunchtime walks or evening walks, I never get this many looks at all. On Thursday, another one of my own Punjabi suits. This is ancient Punjabi suit. My mom bought this for me when I was 15, 16 maybe? One of my teenage birthdays, I don't remember. She got it from Malaysia and it's sleeveless. I usually never wear sleeveless at all, but I agreed to keep this because I like the embroidery and it's got a tupata that you can put on both shoulders and cover it up. So. It's as good as that you have sleeves. It doesn't show at all, you know. I've always been conscious of my arms, so I never wear sleeveless at all. I wore this with the tupata on, and then I took it straight off. I was like, forget it. I didn't go for a lunchtime walk with this one. However, Thursday evenings are usually my grocery shopping day, and I go straight after work usually. So I went out grocery shopping with my Punjabi suit to the local Aldi nearby. No, Lidl. I went to Lidl. This was an interesting shopping experience, I must say. People were staring right from the beginning until somewhere halfway where I stopped noticing everyone because I was just looking at my list and I was so keen on getting everything on my list. I'm not keen on people anymore. You know when you frequent a shop so often, even the people who work there know you and you just smile, you acknowledge. This lady saw me, smiled, turned away, looked at me again and looked at my outfit entirely and then she smiled and then she turned away that was a bit awkward to begin with a lot of other people did that also two aisles down i was very very conscious and awkward because people kept looking at me because i was wearing a Punjabi suit in the day. it was super hot on thursday it was light and airy so i was comfortable that wasn't a problem at all but people probably had it in their mind that i had so much extra fabric when you know everyone was wearing like a tank top and shorts because it was just that hot but it's the same thing again as what happened during wednesday lunch hour I stopped bothering about other people. I started focusing on my list and getting my groceries done and everything. So I didn't even realize that other people were looking at me. When I am focused on them, I noticed that they were focusing on me. But when I didn't focus on them, I didn't care whether they were looking at me and what they were thinking about me or my dressing. Having put so much thoughts into wearing traditional clothes for a week, how would it be fair if I didn't include a sari in it? A sari is probably the mother of all traditions of traditional clothes in India. You can tie a sari in different ways. There's so many different saris. I'm not particularly fond of saris myself, only because it's six yards of cloth and it's super difficult to tie and it's extremely, extremely hot and stuffy. I've tied a sari many times before, so I know the art of tying a sari. I may not be good at it. I can't take the pleats properly and I can't fold it properly and everything. But even then, I know the basics of it. I know how to drape myself in a sari, and that's enough for me. Um, some saris I need help, but some of it I can do it myself. This sari in particular, I bought this I think about two years ago when I went to India. I bought this very, very specifically because I wanted a black sari with coloured borders like this. I saw someone else's Instagram once. I went hunting to every shop in India, showing them that picture from Instagram. Ever since buying it, I've not even unfolded this sari. Which is why I forgot that there was extra fabric in it. Usually, saris that you buy in India comes along with extra material that you can cut and stitch it up into your sari blouse. And I didn't have time to cut it and, you know, sew the ends and stuff. So I just let it be and I said, let's go with the flow. I'm going to drape it around twice. Usually you only drape it around once and then you do the pleats and then it goes around your shoulder. I did it twice because I had extra material. I couldn't help it. That was the biggest mistake ever. Never drape your sari twice. I couldn't walk properly at all. I got up once to go to the toilet. I got up once to make a cup of tea. And the twice that I got up from my seat, I was walking like a penguin. Going to the toilet was even more difficult. The earring was super itchy because the stem was so long. 
The sari was huge and bulky. I had so many layers. I didn't tie it properly. I didn't pin it up properly. I was just uncomfortable. And Friday was the hottest day ever. I sat on my seat. Lakshman turned around, looked at me and he laughed. And he felt sorry for me. And he said, why are you doing this to yourself? Just change into something else. You don't have to do this. You know, why are you doing this? And then it made me think, why am I doing this? By 12 o'clock, I've had enough. The sari came off, the earring came off, and I got into my shorts and my t-shirt. I'm like, nope, I don't need to prove a point to anyone. Just because other people can wear it every day doesn't mean I have to wear it every day. Just because some of my aunts wear a sari all the single time doesn't mean I have to do the same. I successfully won traditional clothes five days in a row. Now what? What was the entire point of the whole thing? I just thought about it, did some reflection, and I figured it doesn't actually take time for me to get ready in the morning because I had already prepped it the weekend before I ironed everything, set it aside. I probably spent a few more minutes extra putting on my face and putting on earrings and stuff. To be honest, I actually didn't enjoy wearing traditional clothes every day, although it was only for five days that week. It actually kind of reminded me of my time when I was doing my undergrad in Bangalore. We had a dress code rule. And the college that I went to where I did my undergrad was run by nuns. So they were super strict with their dress code. We could only wear long tops or traditional clothes, which is Punjabi suits and kurta tops or saris. Never able to wear skirts and t-shirts, no jeans, no dresses. Well, we could wear jeans, but that's only with kurta top, not just regular t-shirt, you know? My aversion for traditional clothes obviously came from this time. I had no other choice but to wear that for three years. I even went all the way to Chennai to do my shopping when I was in Bangalore. I just don't want to wear the same thing as someone else would be in Bangalore. I mean, they say Bangalore is a metropolitan city, it's a super huge city, there's so many shopping centers and stuff, but there's only so many shopping centers and everyone goes to the same places. Everyone is bound to wear something similar to another person and I didn't want to be caught doing that. So I went to Chennai where my auntie used to live every like a few months once to buy traditional clothes and stuff. And by the end of the third year, I had nothing but traditional clothes. By the time I left India, I gave away 95% of my traditional clothes to my cousins and friends. I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to have anything to do with it anymore. I've had enough of it in three years and I just didn't want to wear it anymore. It's probably since then that I reduced wearing traditional clothes. But that can't be the only reason that I can point and blame at. It's my own personal comfort and preference. Ultimately, that's my deal breaker. It's comfort. As it is, I'm petite. Having so much extra material around me makes it extremely difficult and challenging for me to either walk or to be comfortable. And I'm not used to it and I don't want to get used to it. When I have the option of wearing something else far more comfortable, why would I want to pick something which is far more difficult for me to wear and make life more difficult. Give me a pair of jeans and t-shirts or shorts. I am happy. That's all I need. I've also come to realize that what is normal for you is not normal for someone else. If you take UK people, for example, the locals here are used to dresses, jeans, and things of that sort. They are not cultured to understand the tradition that Asians have. They don't understand why do you have so much extra fabric around you? Why do you need this much things and why do you need this much accessories and stuff? Imagine wearing a Punjabi suit or a sari to a local wedding or imagine wearing a dress to an Indian wedding. You can't do that, can you? It's, it's just not going to fit in at all. I no longer now think that it is embarrassing to wear traditional clothes. It's just that I intentionally plan to dress up to blend into the occasion. It makes life so much more easier for me, for everyone else. It just saves you a lot of time from explaining your culture and your traditions. And it also saves other people from the embarrassment of not understanding your culture and your traditions. I think it's extremely important to be culturally sensitive also. While I've moved to the UK, I've learned a lot of things about the local culture here. At the end of the day, you do you. What is normal for you is not normal for anyone else. If you remember that, it makes life so much more easier for you and so much more peaceful and calm for you. Don't always worry about what other people are thinking and what they're doing. It's what I did too last week. I was extremely conscious and aware of my surrounding about how people were reacting towards me when I was wearing a pendulum suit and when I wasn't. But when I forgot about what people were thinking or looking or even pointing at me, I just carried on with my own work. Overall, it has been an interesting week. 
It was nice to be able to wear panjabi suits and it was nice to be able to wear western clothes also. Because I'm cultured both ways, I find it far more liberating that I am able to wear whatever I can and whatever I need to when the occasion calls for it. And that's one of the things that makes me enjoy my wardrobe. I've got all the variety that I want. That's all I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it's given you a bit more boldness to wear whatever you want to wear and to own it as well. Embrace your culture, embrace your tradition. Also embrace wherever you are at that point. I'll see you again next week with another interesting video. Be sure to subscribe so you are notified when I do upload. Take care and stay safe. Bye.